All right, so we have the bird sewed up and we put it on this vise to act as a temporary mounting stand. I really like using a vise to mount standing birds on because you can move it all around. A lot of times you can have them disconnect from your bench and just have them right out in front of you. You can be just turning everything nicely. This is also really good for injecting the feet. You don't have to worry about any of the injection fluid getting on your finished piece or having to try to mask everything off. But having it on a vise is going to give you a much easier, uh, better ability to move all around the bird. So we're going to start by setting the artificial head on the wood duck. Now, if you, one of the things that we need to do is we need to remove these eye rings. The reason why we want to remove the eye rings is we're going to be replacing them with artificial ones. And if we try to put these eye rings around the eye and put our artificial ones on, it's not going to line up right. So we need to remove those eye rings. So to do that, we're going to take our scissors. You want to use a real sharp scissors for this. And we are going to invert the eye like this. And if you look close, you can see that eye ring running around the eye. We're just going to take our scissors and we're just going to snip that right off. We're going to do that on both sides. You only want to remove the iron. You don't want to cut into the feathers themselves. Oh, as you have too big of an opening. Come and get this front corner. There, we've completely removed the eye ring from that side. We're going to go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. And along with doing that, we're also going to go along our entire line where we separated the skin from around the head and look for any little bits of the bill that might still be on it. And we'll just snip those off as well. All right, so we cut off the other eye ring on the other side and we went through and we cleaned up all around where the skin's going to connect to the artificial head. Any little bit of a bill that might have been left on there has been cut off. Now we need to prep this area here to receive the artificial head. So if you remember earlier in the video, we bent this wire over. We're going to straighten that wire out. And we need to put a bib over this entire bird area. When you put your hot glue on here, a lot of times the glue likes to run and it can drip all over your uh, bird, which is not good. So we're just going to take a piece of freezer paper with the shiny side out and put it right over this necking. We'll cut a little notch inside, a little slip, and we'll just put this right over like a bib. That's going to stop any potential glue that's going to get caught on here and not drop onto the feathers. So we have our artificial bird head here. It's been painted and sealed. Now we have to a Dremel tool with a fine tip pointed at the end and we're going to Dremel right around where our skin's going to connect and butt up right to the artificial head. If you don't grind in and remove the paint and the top layer of the artificial head, your glue is not going to stick and your skin's going to pull back as it's drying. So we're going to take our Dremel and cut through the paint and the outer layer of the artificial head and go right around the entire outline of where we're going to be putting our skin. We'll go ahead and do that now. All right, we have completely came around the entire artificial head. 
and we've made a little line all the way around. We cut through the paint and the top layer of the artificial skull. Now we have a good place to put our glue on and a good solid connection for our skin to connect with. We need to put another hole in the back of the head that runs up at an angle like this. That's going to give us the ability to run this wire through and come out the top. If you would just run your wire in like it is right now without having a relief hole, you'll get an air bubble in there and you won't get a solid adhesion. There'll be a big air pocket. So we need to be able to burp that air out. It's going to take our drill, come up at an angle, come right out through the top of the head. You want to make sure you knock that excess out. You don't want to have any of that in there, otherwise you won't get enough glue in there. Now we'll come up here and we'll size it on the head. So we can take our artificial head and actually manipulate this wire around that it's sitting on to kind of start to get the position that we want. And if we have too much wire sticking out, this would be the time to snip it. So we're going to do a connection that looks about like this right here. You can see this flat that we cut into the necking fits perfectly on the back of the artificial head. So we're going to go ahead and attach this now with hot glue. We'll put the hot glue inside of these holes as well as a small amount on the back of the head. Come and put this back on the wire. Start to, we want to push it securely into the necking. And if you notice, we're going to start to have some glue popping out. Now you can either take a used piece of wire or a pin and we'll just go ahead and push this glue back. We don't want that big knob up on top. Our skin isn't going to sit right. And you want to make sure you go all the way around the head and see if you have a lot of dripping glue. A lot of times it's going to drip down. So you want to make sure you pull it back up. Kind of smooth some of this glue out on top. Take a look at it from the show side. And we'll just hold this in place till it sets up. So while this is finishing setting up, we're going to go ahead and talk a little about the eyes that we're going to be using, as well as our artificial eye rings. These are just a 10 millimeter wood duck eye. You can use anywhere from a 9 or a 10 millimeter, depending on the style. <clears throat> I like it to go with the slightly bigger ones, the 10 millimeters. They work a little bit better with these Farabee eye rings, and I just think they look a little nicer. So we're going to be using the Farabee eye rings, and these are artificial eye rings. They come with a little bit of flashing around them yet. We're going to be removing that flashing now for the method that I use. So there's a lot of different kinds of eye rings on the market. Some of them they want you to keep their flashing on, and you go ahead and put them on there, and you glue around that. But I have a different method that I like to use. So we're going to go ahead and trim this excess flashing off from the molding process. I'm just cutting right around the eye ring itself, just removing that ring of flashing. Come in and trim it a little bit closer with this scissors. So if you can zoom in, you can see this one, the flashing's been removed, and this one we have to remove it on yet. That's about how it's going to look. And that's going to replace that eye ring that we cut off. Wood ducks have real prominent eye rings like this, and so it's recommended that you put them back on with either using these artificial ones or making them yourself out of epoxy. Okay, so this is set up. We're going to go ahead and remove this bib that was around it to keep the glue from dropping onto it. And at this time, we need to install the artificial eyes into the artificial skull. And we're going to use critter clay to do that. You don't need a lot of critter clay, just basically enough to fill up the eye socket on each side, and then we'll set the eyes into it. Okay. 
I would suppose we're going to put about a pea size amount in each eye. I'll put that right inside that eye orbit. We'll repeat it on this side as well. Make sure you don't have a lot of clay on your fingers so you don't start smudging your, your eyes. If you do, you can just take a little bit of water and clean them off. We'll go ahead and push this eye into the clay and we want to seat it firmly against the eye socket on the inside. And this clay, we're not going to get too crazy about shaping this clay because the eye ring that's going around it is going to pretty much determine the shape of the eye. If this was any other species, we'd mess around with it a little bit more. But right now we're just going to keep the clay about like that. We'll go ahead and do the same process on the back side or on my side. Push it in, seat it in there nice and firmly. Move the clay around. The main thing is, is that you have a nice big eye opening. You don't want to have it so that way when you put your artificial eye ring on later on, you are moving a lot of the clay around. Something about like this is how it's going to look at the end. All right, now that we have that completed, we're going to go ahead and pull the skin right up over the head. Right like this. We're going to come in right like that. Now if you notice, I don't have the head completely shaped for the finished pose yet because I need to be able to get all around the head with the gluing process. This crown looks a little ratty yet. We're going to go ahead and clean that up in a second after we get the head glued into place. Before I glue it, I'm going to put a small amount of caulking along the top of the head in between the skin and the artificial skull, pretty much running from about right here to this whole area right here. Just a small amount, enough for us to be able to seat these crown feathers in a little bit to lock them in place. We'll also be putting some uh, caulking in this area, running down the neck. That's gonna build that out nicely. And we might put some of the cheeks as well, depending on how full we want our cheeks to look. We'll go ahead and pull this skin back over. And we're going to be using liquid nails for this. And we're going to be using one of these types of syringes. You can use a regular uh, syringe as well, but this curve tip's pretty nice. We're going to open it up a little bit bigger though than it is. A little bit better flow. And we're just going to fill this whole thing up with liquid nails. Okay, so we're going to take a small amount and we're going to run it along the top of the head. Just basically a little squiggly line that's going to run something like this. We, we don't want to put too much here because it's going to affect our crown. Just enough to give it something those feather ruts to sit into. About like that much right there. That's about all you need on the top. We can go ahead and pull that down. Start to move the skin around a little bit, taxi it into place around the eyes. And at this time, we're going to put some caulking. We're going to come right underneath, and we're going to start putting this along the neck. So we're going to be starting caulking about right here. Gonna squeeze this in and we're gonna kind of move it back and forth in a zigzag pattern. Start to fill that up nice. It's gonna give us a nice full neck and make it so our throat connection where it connects to the artificial head is a nice smooth transition. You're not gonna be able to see it as good as this type of pose as you would with a normal standing pose because the head's gonna be tucked in so much, but it's still important to do. And we're going to run that caulking to about right here. 
any little bit of work that we decide to do on the cheeks will do after we have everything glued on. If you do it now and you try to glue everything in, you get a big caulking mess that will want to run out and get all over all your feathers. So we're just going to do the underside and the top for now with our caulking. We're going to use uh, Zappa Gap to attach the skin to the artificial head. You could use uh, super glue as well, but Zappa Gap works really well. I recommend squirting a small amount into a container. And then we'll use two pins to glue the head, to glue the skin to the artificial head. One will be for applying the glue and one will be for manipulating the skin. So we'll be starting in the top notch. We'll pull this back carefully, being mindful that we do have caulking here. Make sure that doesn't get on the feathers. And we're going to apply a small amount of glue. You don't need a lot of glue. Just a, a nice thin line running along our entire length of the area that we ground out. And we're just going to start with this top V-notch. You want to be careful that you don't get glue on your bill. And if you do, you're probably going to leave a mark and you have to repaint that. We're going to carefully pull this skin down and taxi it into place, starting with our front corner. Then we're going to line up our side corners, this white. You want this white to appear right at the top corner, this white strip, this white line that they have. Go ahead and repeat that here. This glue sets up pretty quickly, so you have to keep moving. But the important thing is, is that you have the skin taxied up all the way along the bill and that it's pushed into that glue tight. And make sure that your corners are lined up correctly. You can sometimes take your finger and gently tap it in place as well. At this time, we'll slightly angle the head up just so we can see it a little bit better. And we'll go ahead and connect under the underside the same way we did it on the top. We'll glue it and then we'll push the skin into place. Just a thin line of glue. You can also use a tweezers for this as well if you find that's easier. Just connect to that front notch and push it right into place. I'm going to take my finger and gently pad that in. So also use your pin to manipulate that skin around. Now that we have that completed, we'll do this side. I see I, I have a little bit of membrane sticking right here. We're going to go ahead and snip that little bit off just so it doesn't get into our glue or onto our bill. We just want direct connection with the feathers to the artificial skull. Slightly angle this here. Start at the top corner and work our way down to right around the grin latch area. Carefully pull this skin in and set it in place. It's important throughout this whole process that you look at a lot of reference. Uh, it's be a good idea to have the, a picture of a wood duck's head out right now so you can be kind of referencing these different points, making sure you're lining all the feather patterns up correctly, especially this corner notch. You want to make sure that that's directly coming off of this notch of yellow right here. This side has been attached. We'll repeat the process on the back side. I'm 
right that's been glued the only spot left to glue is on these two corners right here and then on my side so we'll go ahead and push this skin back a little bit <clears throat> and put a small amount of glue here you want to make sure you don't get glue on the feathers and we'll just pull this skin in place right like that now we'll repeat that process on the other side now that we have the skin all glued around the head we're going to start working on the eyes up on your screen right now you see a good example of how a wood duck eyes should look we're going to be copying that now i have that same picture right out here in front of me on my phone so we're going to start by setting this eye we're going to realign this skin and we're going to start with the front corner we're going to tuck that eye skin right in the front we're going to find the back corner of the eye and tuck that right in the back and we're going to start to manipulate and push this skin here into place you don't want to have this white showing that gets tucked up and under basically what we're doing right now is we're tucking the skin and making room to put our artificial eye ring around it that's going to replace those eye rings that we cut off earlier something about right like this should be perfect that gives us a lot of room to attach our eye ring it's important that when you attach your artificial eye ring that you line it up pretty much right where you want it right at first because it's going to be glued on tight you don't want to put it on and then have it set off and then have to start twisting it around because it's going to be glued onto the skin it's going to start pulling that skin around with it and might uh, misalign some of the feather patterns on the head so we're going to go ahead and glue the front side on first I like to take my tweezers and hold right onto the eye right onto the eye ring and we're going to put a small amount of glue along the entire back side of the eye this is just regular Zappa Gap or super glue. Now we're going to take this and put it over the eye into that can come right around with it, right like this. We'll take our fingers and just gently push that right into place. We're going to kind of push it and seed it into that clay that we had around the eye. And then from here, we can start to groom these feathers up around it. And we're going to take a little bit of water on a brush and just clean the eye off and make sure that there's no clay residue coming up around the edges of the eye. So that eye has been set. We'll now repeat that same process on the other side. All right, so now that we have both eyes set, we want to work a little bit on setting this crown and lining these white feathers up in straight lines running down. We're not going to get too crazy on the overall position of the head at this time because we're going to be setting this a little bit more after we have the wings themselves set. But we do want to get started on these white lines. So there's a couple of different tools we're going to use to achieve this. One of them is a tweezers. The next will be a pin. And the third will be using uh, compressed air to realign these head feathers. We're actually going to start with the compressed air. That's going to really help to realign these nicely. see that kind of just took that big disheveled crown that we had and helped realign it this thing has pretty big green feathers up on top so we're going to take our pin and slowly start moving these green feathers back over the top 
and start exposing that white line that we just realigned with that compressed air. Sometimes you might have to come back a couple of times with that air. There's no quick way of doing this. You just have to sit here for quite a while and get all these feathers realigned back in position. Sometimes these can be real tricky and real tedious to get these white lines to line up. It's just a matter of working from the underside and up above them and pulling them out from in between the green feathers and realigning everything. I'm just going to pick this entire crown up and reposition, push into that caulking a little bit just to help force some of these feathers back in place right where I want them to be. And depending on the type of crown that you have, they're all going to turn out a little bit different. 